So for those that don't know, I am starting a summer mentorship program this summer. And I recently announced the, the two applicants that I selected for my summer mentorship program. We went through over 75 applications. So a lot of crazy stuff in those applications and emails exchange. And I wanted to talk about that in this video. What's up guys, I'm Dr. Webb, orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. So a couple months ago, I announced that um, I'm starting a summer mentorship program. And I, I primarily wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do this for a while, but my main goal for this particular program and the reason for this program is, is, is essentially to give back. Uh, once I actually made it to where I was trying to go, which is a spine surgeon, um, I want to reach back and give back and help others actually get to that point. There are a number of different articles that highlight the importance of African Americans in the field of orthopedic surgery, specifically spine surgery. Studies have come out that have shown that less than 1.9% of orthopedic surgeons are African American. It's even lower than that uh, for spine surgeons. And here in San Antonio, there are probably 75 to 100 spine surgeons. There are two of us who are African American. There's a huge need for it. It's a disparity. Uh, the inequalities in medicine, and I don't wanna make this video all about this, but it's important that we have these conversations because patients need to be treated by providers that look like them. And I have a lot of patients that seek me out because of my skin color, because I can relate to them. And I'm not saying that other physicians of various skin colors can't relate to them. It's just that um, I understand. So I came from a really rough background, grew up in Louisiana, and you guys have probably heard my story or checked out my documentary, and I'll put that right up here. But my reason for this program, for starting it, and for the nonprofit, the Webb Family Foundation, is essentially to give back, to increase the number of minorities, women, specifically African Americans, in the field of orthopedic surgery and spine surgery. So this program, we had over 75 applications, and you know it was a challenge to go through and pick out the students that I, I thought were the top students. Man, we saw a lot of crazy things. So it was really challenging to pick out just two out of 75, so very competitive. And hopefully in the future, we can grow this, other states, other cities, other personnel, surgeons, physicians that wanna get involved. But as we were reviewing applications, there are a number of different things that's, that I saw. I was like, I just can't believe this, this is crazy. And I know the process, the system is not like medical school or law school or PA school, nurse practitioner, CRNA, but those skill sets, those exchange, those non-cognitives are very important when you are talking to medical schools or applying to medical schools or nursing schools. So a couple of things that I want everyone to do, and you can use these things when you're applying to medical school. It's not applicable just to my program, it's applicable to medical school, nursing school, PA, whatever program that you're applying to. So the first thing is don't send an email to a nonprofit organization website or official email for an application that says, pick me. Don't do that. That's a red flag for me. That's unprofessional. The person who did that, the you should never send an email that says, pick me, pick me, pick me. I believe it's the same person. I went through so many applications, but this same person sent four separate emails. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there was like one thing in one email. The second email said, pick me. The third email said, um, had maybe the, the PDF of his application, which for those that don't know, I required a short essay um, and the prompt was to talk about how you will benefit from this program, how would this program allow you to give back to others, and you know why, basically why should I pick you. The second requirement was a letter of re recommendation. And I wasn't really strict, you know, some people had a letter of recommendation from their old coach, their old teacher, professor, I wasn't really strict. The other thing was your CV, so your resume. Um, this person, I won't say male or female, they sent four or five different emails. Don't do that. Send one email, make sure you proofread that email, every single word, have someone look at it, 
And before you send it, make sure you have all the attachments, everything is attached correctly, that you're attaching the right thing and you proofread it, maybe email it to yourself first as a rough draft and make sure it goes through, it flows correctly. Because um, yeah, you don't wanna say those things, pick me. The second thing is the CV portion. So I had individuals who applied and their CV, I was looking at it and I was like, man, this makes no sense, the formatting error. There was someone who sent a CV that had, I understand you, you get your draft from an online, like the basis of it, the skeleton of the CV, but some people had some of the skeleton still left over. So some of the words like insert photo here, proofread your CV, have someone look over it. You know, those were kind of red flags for me that, um, you know, it's strict and it's competitive. So you have to make sure every single thing is on point. Uh, the, the, the next thing was the essay. There's some people that didn't really follow the prompt. So when you're applying to medical school, you're going through these application systems, they're gonna be prompts. You need to answer those according to th what the prompt says. If the prompt says, why should we pick you? Or why do you wanna be a doctor? Don't go off in, in, into la la land about you know, something else. Like uh, I had an ACL injury and my dad picked me up and ran me to the hospital. Maybe that's the reason why you're a doctor, but don't be distracted by it. There's some students that didn't answer the prompt correctly. You can't follow instructions or directions. That's for me, how can I trust you taking care of a patient? These patients are you know, trusting us with their lives and putting their lives in our hands. You gotta be able to follow instructions. Third thing is, or the next thing is to get your application in on time. I had some applicants that emailed me after the due date and said, hey, I had a you know, fire or my dog ate my application or can I, I'm sorry that it's late. You know, I, I gave plenty enough time. There were students who got their application in within that first week. And I actually started from the bottom. The students that sent their application in first, I reviewed those first. And I'm not saying that anything, my technique, my way of reviewing applications, picking applicants is maybe not like the medical schools and the committees, how they pick applicants. But I would assume I was on one admissions committee before. These are the things that we were looking for, those red flags. All it takes is one little thing to mark off your application because so many other competitive students are applying. And after a while, everybody application starts to look the same. So you, you know, you're this student here who's 4.0 at you know, this college, this student here is a 4.0 at this college, they both have this volunteer community service research. So it makes it challenging to uh, you know, really tease out. All it takes is one little thing. You have those two applications in front of you, and they're both great applicants, but one maybe had a grammatical error. And that doesn't necessarily say you're gonna be a bad doctor, it's just when someone has to review these applications in the middle of the night, when I was doing them late night, you know, if there's their first sentence of their application didn't really make sense. I want apply Dr. Webb's program. Like make a complete sentence. And these are not people that are, you know, English is not their first language. So make sure you proofread, have someone look over your CV, have someone look over your application, make sure you check for grammatical errors. I can't stress enough how many grammatical errors that we saw when we were reviewing the applications. So gotta make sure you check it. The next thing is I really enjoy when students sent a picture with their application. So my picture is actually on my CV. So when I'm sending my CV to different companies or you know, someone that's requesting my CV, it has my picture attached to it. It's just a really small picture, professional photo that was attached to it. Other students just sent that in their application. For me, it puts a face to a story. Oh, this student had a really rough background, grew up in this type of environment, and I see his face. And there was actually one guy who looked just like me. And I was like, man, that guy, that guy looks just like me. Wow, that's crazy. So if that's able to be done, if you're applying to a summer mentorship program, a research program, in your CV or separate, put it so they, you know, they can see your picture, professional photo that you can get done. The next thing is do not send a Google link drive to have me download the link. No, separate your files. There's a program that I use and I'll put it in the description below. It's, I don't get any payment from this, but I'm not promoting this app, but it uh, combines all of your, your, your files into one. So all I have to do is scroll through and everything's there. Make it easy for the person that's interviewing or reviewing your application. I shouldn't have to download 40 
three different files, put it all in one file so it's easy for the person. You wanna make it the easiest that that person can do. When I was applying to medical school, when I wanted someone to write a letter of recommendation for me, I went to Kinko's and I printed out my CV, my other letter of recommendations, my transcripts, my important highlights, my grades, and I put it all in a file. And what I used to do is, everything's probably submitted ele electronically now, but I would put a pre-stamped envelope with the address of where it's going. So all the letter writer had to do is write the letter, print it out, put it into the envelope that I already paid for the postage so they can just drop it in the, the mailbox. Makes it makes it easy for them. There was a student that sent, or applicant that sent a Google link drive for his documents. And my internet wasn't running perfectly well that day. I think I was in a bad part of the house, but you know, that took a while to download that link and that frustrated me. So that's not that applicant's fault. It's just, uh, you have to kind of, these nuances, things like that will make or break you. So especially when there's only two people selected out of 75. So make sure that you either combine all of the documents in one large file, and that's really not a large file, it's just a file that can easily be downloaded. Hit one button, it's downloaded. Or if you separate the files, make sure that you review the formatting. Email it to yourself and look at it. Some of the emails that came through, I was looking at them and the formatting was off until I got to my computer and I can see, oh, okay. It's just, it was off because of the Word document that was sent. PDFs are probably the best. If you can download it into a PDF versus a Word file, depending on that person's computer, they may have a Mac or a PC and that, that Word document may come out a little bit different. So these are things that you just pick up as you go along and things that I kind of notice when reviewing all these applications. So reviewed over 75 applicants and the, the students that I selected in the next video, I'm going to talk about why. I'm going to talk about some things that you can do to strengthen your application, help you stand out. And there, there were some students that emailed that wanted to get some feedback on their application. There was probably two students, maybe three out of 75. Email people and ask them, what can I do to strengthen my application? When I was getting rejections from medical school, that's what I did. I contacted every school. I called them or emailed them and say, hey, what can I do to strengthen my application? So you, you guys should do the same. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some things that you can do to strengthen your application, whether you're applying to PA school, a research program, a post back, medical school, law school, all these tips are applicable. But it was really hard to select those two students. And in the next video, I'm going to tell you guys why I selected both of them. This is Dr. Webb. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.